I've got an equation for another quadric surface up here on the board. I'm suspicious that it's a quadric surface because I'm seeing all of my variables squared. Notice that this one again is going to have as its center the origin. And I can tell that because I'm not adding or subtracting anything to x, y, or z before I square them. And I don't have any just x's, just y's, or just z's not being squared. Okay. So I'm going to be concerned again with the coordinate planes. Those will all pass through the center. Okay. And if I take a look in the x, y plane, I'm just getting an ellipse. If I look in the x, z plane, I'd be getting a hyperbola. And if I look in the y, z plane, I'm going to be getting a hyperbola. So the cross sections are going to give me equations uh, the cross-sectional curves are going to be conic sections, and I can see that just from the equations that I get if I kill off one of those terms. All right, so let's draw our traces. Let's just start in the xy plane. That has as its equation z equals 0. So I would have x squared over 4 plus y squared equals 1. Notice y squared is equivalent to y squared over 1. And I can view that 4 as 2 squared and that 1 as 1 squared. And so in the x direction, I would come 2 away from the center. In the y direction, I would come 1 away from the center. Connect those points with a beautiful curve. And we have a lovely ellipse that's a little bit wider than it is tall. Okay, if I look in the xz plane, that would have as its equation y equals 0. So I'm killing off the y term. So I'm just getting x squared over 4 minus z squared over 9 equals 1. So because I'm subtracting here, this is going to be a hyperbola. Here's my xz plane. I'm going to write that 4 as 2 squared and the 9 as 3 squared. And I want to remember here that x can't be 0 because then I'd have 0 minus something that is never negative equals 1, and that's not possible. But x equaling 0 would just be the z-axis. So we're never going to touch the z-axis which tells me this has to be a hyperbola that has a left and a right branch. So this horizontal distance of 2, if I go 2 to the left and 2 to the right of center, that's going to give me points that are actually on the hyperbola. So those are my vertices. Now for this 3, if I go 3 up and 3 down, that's not going to give me any points on the hyperbola. But that's going to allow me to draw in this rectangular box whose asymptotes, sorry, whose diagonals will be the asymptotes for my two branches. So that's going to tell me how wide to make the branches. So now I can draw in the left and right branch. I will expect that when you are drawing traces, if you have hyperbolas as your traces, I will expect that you show me those asymptotes and make sure they're dotted lines because points on the asymptotes are not actually points on the hyperbola. All right, if I now look in the yz plane, that has as its equation x equals 0. So that gives me y squared minus z squared over 9 equals 1. Again, I can write that y squared as y squared over 1, and I can write in that that 1 is 1 squared, and that 9 is 3 squared. Okay, so we're going to be in our yz plane, and because the y squared is the positive term, y can never be 0. But y being 0, once again, that would be the z-axis, so this is also going to have a left and a right branch. So that one there, that's the horizontal distance that I'll go away from the center to my vertices, 
Once again, that three is a vertical distance, but that's not gonna take me to points that are on the hyperbola. That's just gonna allow me to draw in this beautiful rectangular box whose diagonals will be my asymptotes. So that when I draw the branches, I make sure that I don't draw something like this. That would be too narrow. I want to draw something that's approaching those asymptotes. Okay, so now we've got a very common situation where we've got two of one type of conic section and one of another. So I'm going to refer to this one as the oddball. Okay. And in my experience, it's always easiest to draw the oddball one second. So I'm going to draw one of the hyperbolas, then my ellipses, then the other hyperbola. Okay. And here's a situation where it's useful to point out that I happen to have drawn the traces that we actually get it in the planes that pass through the center. If I were to move to another, a parallel plane, I would get a different ellipse in any plane parallel to the xy plane, but I would still get an ellipse. I would get a different hyperbola in any plane parallel to the xz plane, but I would still get a hyperbola. So looking at what I get in the planes through the center tells me the type of conic section. Notice, if I were in a plane parallel to the xy plane, that would just mean that I'd have a different value for z other than zero. Let's just say z was three, so that z squared was 9. So if I looked in the plane z equals 3, I'm getting x squared over 4 plus y squared. It would become minus 1, because that would be 9 over 9, equals 1. Well, I would add that one over. So that would become x squared over 4 plus y squared equals 2. Now that's still going to be a hyper an ellipse, but that's not in standard form because I've got a 2 here instead of a 1. So I would divide both sides by 2, and I'd get x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. Notice, I've still got an ellipse. It's just going to be bigger, because I've got bigger numbers in the denominators here. Okay. So as I move up or down from the xy plane, I'm just going to be getting bigger ellipses. That's actually really important because it turns out I am going to draw some of those ellipses in some parallel planes. Although this isn't a case where I needed to actually move to parallel planes to see that. Seeing that I got an ellipse in the plane through the center tells me I'm going to get ellipses in any parallel plane. All right, so I have two suggestions for drawing things. One is, unless you have a good reason for doing otherwise, start in the yz plane. The other, and this is the one that's more important actually, is to draw the oddball one second. Okay. So the oddball one was the ellipse, so I'm going to draw that one second, and I did have hyperbolas in the yz plane, so I'm going to start with my hyperbola in the yz plane. And it was fairly tall like so. Okay. Now, this would be where the origin is. Once again, I'm going to just draw in my axes at the end. I could certainly draw in the ellipse that I had um, in the xy plane. But if I do that, you see how these bits of the curve are just sort of hanging out up here? I refer to that, these sort of dangling pieces of curve, I refer to those as spider legs. I don't want spider legs, because if I have spider legs, it looks like I've just got a bunch of different curves. It doesn't clearly look like I have a surface. So I want to make sure that I'm connecting these top pieces and these bottom pieces. The hyperbola, of course, goes on forever, so there are no top and bottom parts, but I'm just drawing a section. So it's actually going to be much more important that I draw in the ellipses at the top and the bottom. This one here is almost optional. Knowing that I got an ellipse in the plane through the center was enough to tell me that I was getting ellipses in any parallel plane. Okay. So that was still a useful trace, 
but I want to make sure that I'm connecting the individual pieces. And then in the XZ plane, we also had a hyperbola. So I can draw in the front branch, which would connect the front part of this to the front part of this, and then the back branch that would connect the back part to the back part. <laughs> so that gives me my quadric surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in the axes. You may, you can experiment with this. You may find that it's simpler to draw in the axes first, and you certainly can do that. Again, I've just found that usually if I'm drawing something centered at the origin, I prefer to draw in the axes at the end. Just a matter of personal preference. All right, so we have sort of this hourglass shape. That has a name that's called a hyperboloid in one sheet. <laughs> now, the next example we take a look at will be a hyperboloid in two sheets, and that'll make the name a little bit more clear. But basically, this all comes in one piece. This is one connected surface that we have here. 